So this design I actually digitized myself uh, manually, manually digitized it. What I mean by that is I've used tools and I've basically defined a shape and then I've filled it with stitches. That's what I mean by manually. That's not to say that we haven't got automated features that make the, the job easier. An example of that would be um, these corners, how are these corners treated? We've got a feature called um, cap corners, mitered corners, lap corners. You know, you've got a, a wide variety of different ways of actually treating that shape. That's what we call a cap, that's what we call a mitre, that's what we call a lap corner. So it's using the appropriate method for, for, the, for the job, really. I mean, this is really, particularly lap corners, is a fantastic solution if you do an applique. Okay. So all of these embroidery objects essentially are vector shapes with stitch information. And lettering is, 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 is um, an example of that. And we just have a little look at how we've created the lettering, for example. If I just right click on there, all the properties are actually stored within that lettering object. And that lettering object was actually made, obviously, this year with 30 years in mind. If I'm here this, this, time, this time next year, in fact, we'll be celebrating our 31st con clarity that we'll be having the balloons at that point, but certainly we will be 31. We just update, and you can see it's that simple just to update an embroidery design with some lettering in it. Remember, this has been made with pure cotton in mind. Um, if, for example, I decided that I was going to be embroidering straight onto the fabric at 7 mil, remember that originally I actually had my text sitting on a, ba uh, a base of stitches. And, and because I was sitting on a base of stitches, it was actually going to be able to support that small text. If I actually was going to embroider it straight onto the fabric, I might need to consider that perhaps that's not an appropriate um, font style. I might decide that at 7 millimeters to use one of the pre-digitized fonts that has been specifically designed for small text. You see, anything beginning, in, beginning with SM or small has been specifically designed and has been specifically adjusted for text of around 7 or 8 millimeters. Okay, just pop that back up. So that's sort of um, how we'd create an embroidery design. I just want to sort of show you how you can ha how we can help you understand a design, whether you created it or whether somebody else created it for you. You've got a color object list. What the color object list does is actually gives you a list of all the colors within the design in the sequence um, that they're actually going to be stitched. So, for example, we can see that the area in pink is going to be stitched first. It's highlighted in pink, but if you actually look at the the color object list, the area in grey, highlighted currently in pink, is going to be stitched next, and then the red, and then the black. Now in this particular instance, perhaps I embroider this design, and um, after embroidering the text last, it actually distorts my outline. So in this particular instance, what I would like to do is resequence that design so that the text is actually embroidered before the outline. And it's literally um, a, a very, very simple job. You just click, select, drag, and drop. So now you can see in terms of sequence, we've resequenced it. If you wanted to recolor the design, it's just a case of looking at the objects that you, you want to deal with. If you want to select sequential, you can just select and shift. If you want to select non-sequential, you just hold your control. The standard Windows sort of uh, commands in terms of if you want to work with non-sequential or sequential objects. And say, for example, if you just wanted to take that and recolor it, it's as simple as that. Okay, so that's, a, a suppose, a, a, a way of actually understanding an embroidery design. But if, I, in fact, I wanted to modify that design in a more uh, comprehensive way, a good way of sort of seeing what we can do in terms of editing is, again, to look at the lettering. What we can do is we could say, well, okay, I really like that lettering, but actually I want to put it on a, a straight baseline. I can pop it on a straight baseline. In, in, in Wilcom software, if you can select it, you can modify it. You can see that's popped up straight away. If you want to change its font style, select it and change the font style. If you wanted to make more sort of radical changes to the, uh, the, embro sorry, the embroidery file, um, it might be the, the, the case that, that in fact you've got a graphic and you're trying to match a graphic and use our automatic lettering to do that. You know, it's, it's frequently the case that a, a graphic designer will perhaps even use multiple, multiple fonts or multiple styles of text within the same word or within the same um, logo. And so you, you might find that we've got an embroidery font that is similar to it, but in not in fact exactly the same. So if you wanted to modify your text, use the automatic text, but modify to match your graphic. Select the text, 
click on the diamond within it. If you want to modify a particular letter, you can scale it upwards. If you hold your control key, you can pop it off its baseline. And if you have a little look there, just so you can sort of explain a little bit about what you're seeing, this is what we call a connector. We have closest point join with our text. And you can see that it isn't something that's fixed when you tell when you say it is closest point join, it truly is closest point join, it is dynamic and it will update itself based on the changes that you make. So can you see that closest point join is moving as I move my letter? If my letter becomes so close to the next letter, it will actually remove the trim because it, you would just jump across it. So it's actually saying that that distance is too short, too short to trim. Just an explanation of actually what you're seeing there. If in the instance that, say for example, you had this text but actually you weren't very happy with this C, it doesn't actually match the graphic, the sorts of modification that you can make with your Wilcom software, click on the diamond to say, yes, it's that uh, letter I'm interested in, click on the outline, and it gives you the control points that we use to make it. If you want to affect two at a time, just click and drag over them, and you can reshape and modify that to get exactly what you want, and it will just update itself in the instance whereby you wanted to scale it, make it bigger, make it smaller. It's that easy. Yeah? And you can see that what's actually happening is we're removing the stitches, we're scaling the outline, and we're reapplying the stitches. And that's quite critical in terms of a concept, because what we're not doing is stretching and squashing, squashing stitches. What we're actually doing is removing the stitches, we're scaling the outline, we're reapplying the stitches. Remember, we're reapplying the stitches based on the object properties, but we're also reapplying the stitches based on our auto fabric assistant, on the fabric type that we've selected. So they're appropriate stitches with the appropriate amount of pull compensation and with the appropriate underlay. Okay, I'll just back up on that. And you've got multiple undos and redos with this. So if you decide you want to have a little play with the design and try a few things out, you can always go back to where you started. 